Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and today I'm going to talk about some shortages because as usual we've had some supply issues around the factory and we've been trying to sort them out. The first one started over here when I started having a look through all the various different resources that we've got available on the network, looking at the graph up here and trying to see and, and looking for any, any warning signs basically. And the first one I saw, and this is mostly recovered now, but we were very, very short of both green and red circuits on the on the graph here. They were both down to, to virtually zero. So I thought, okay, that's that's pretty bad. Let's go and have a look into that. So, down here we have the new circuit production area that Mark made, actually I say, I say new, this is probably months ago now, but it's been, run, it's been sat down here, it runs, it runs very nicely, you get a stream of all of the components coming in and it'll, it'll build up the circuits. But it turned out that up here we weren't making any of the green circuits, and if you're not making any green circuits you can't make red circuits, so that's why we'd run out of both of them. And it turned out that was because we weren't getting any stone bricks in to make the stone slabs to make the to make the circuits. And that felt like a really weird problem to have, because surely we can't be short of stone, can we? So I had a quick look up here um, in, into the uh, the smelting area and, and all the stone handling area, and this was this was a this is a little bit weird in the first place because it turns out you can't make stone bricks in anything more advanced than an electric furnace. So stone bricks can be made in stone furnaces, steel furnaces, electric furnaces, and okay, they can be making made in space in a thermodynamics facility. But basically, your your best bet is to use an electric furnace. You can't go on and use any of the really advanced ones just because apparently they're too clever to make stone bricks. It's beneath them or something like that. So uh, yeah, we've got this huge area here with uh, relatively basic beacons, and we've got okay, we're using tier three productivity modules in there, sure, uh, but you only get two of them in each machine. So, it, but yeah, it's churning out a load of stone bricks, so that's fine. Um, but the problem was, there wasn't any stone coming in, and when I had a look, it was because there was a, st a train stuck here, and it was it was stuck here because it was one of the ones that goes to a mine, and it looks like we've been plundering our mines so hard recently, we've been getting through so much stone, that even though they're a lower priority, we were, we were uh, we'd still managed to completely empty the, the stone mines. And that meant the train was sitting there waiting because... It didn't have anywhere to go. There was no low priority stone supply available for it to go off to uh, collect from, and so it came round. It just sort of parked in here, uh, and so it was stuck in the station because it couldn't go anywhere. So I've taken all the stone mine trains and I've added in this additional stone drop prio uh, option in here. So they'll then wait here instead of going off to the stone mine, and that means that uh, they'll at least get out of the station here. Which means that then the higher priority ones, like this one, which has gone to stone pickup prio, which means this is picking up the stone from the uh, from the core mining, uh, core processing, sorry, can then head out and pick up some more and then. Come back around here to empty it out, and, we've, and therefore we've got we've got a decent supply of stone running again. Now, if we have a look over in the uh, in the um, in, in the core mining area, we can see that how much stone we got. We've got we've got less than a train's worth actually over here. So we are starting to run really quite low on stone. We may need to start thinking about going out and investigating that stone primary that's somewhere out in this system on Andrew Gun and go out and put in some basic core mining there like we did on um, Oliran and that'll allow us to have a basically unlimited supply of stone coming in so that's, that's, that's quite spectacular and as a sort of side effect of this we were looking at the um, we were looking at the flow through here and we discovered at one point actually the, uh, the core mining had stopped running and that was because we'd overloaded on coal as well and so Tristan came in and poked things a little bit I think there's now um, additional oh yeah some additional plastic storage over here so the uh, the excess coal that comes through so all of the resources come through here on these belts they've sorted out quite neatly along here so we've got coal on um this one we've got stone we've got rare metals and, and so on and any excess is turned into landfills so we're making crazy amounts of landfill but it, but you can't turn coal into landfill so as an, a, to put in an extra sink for that over here we have a prioritizer which sends coal into these warehouses for the station by preference. And we've got two warehouses here, but they are both very nearly full. So when this one fills up, it'll then send the coal over to here instead, put it into this system where it's being used to make plastic. And I think this is a high priority plastic uh, production area. However, it was completely full of plastic. So the coal had backed up all the way through and we had too much coal, more coal than we knew what to do with. And so we've got this system in here now passing it through. We've got some extra warehouses and we're using inserters to uh, to pass it through because we have uh, we are under the impression that inserters are significantly better for your UPS than, uh, than loaders, at least when they're running like this. Because each time an inserter swings, it, uses, it does one swing, it checks to see if there's room for it to put 12 items into the other warehouse. And in this case, there, there is plenty of room for it to put 12 items into the other warehouse. There is quite a bit of space available at the bottom. Whereas an, an, a loader will check every single time it loads a single item. So it'll check 12 times as often. So in theory, these should be much, much better um, for, for, for UPS. And in places like this, where we're just sort of vaguely passing it through, it's probably going to be a lot better to use those. 
Over here, we, we could use inserters here. The rate the plastic seems to be coming through, they would probably be significantly better than the loaders, but uh, we've got all of this set up already. Up here, we can't realistically use inserters because we we want the sheer throughput that you get from a loader to allow to allow us to fill a train up quickly. But for sort of low priority stuff like these, the inserters should be absolutely fine. And so that sorts out one of the problem things over here. The um, the the ores, the the rare metals, the copper and the iron can all be turned into uh, landfill. So that's not too serious. We've made a crazy quantity of landfill. I mean, I looked over here and worked out we've made eighty thousand uh, landfill out of uh, out out of stone, and that recipe takes. 50 stone for each one. So I think that means we've got through about 2 million stone turning it into landfill, which is extremely wasteful given that we are now short of it. But uh, we were we, we haven't always been short of it. Sometimes we've had a surplus. So stone is a weird thing. We seem to it seems to be my feeling is it's the thing that swung between having too much of it and too little of it the most times during this game. We've got, as I say, we've got the two warehouses to to, uh, to stock it a bit more of it over here. We filled up. We have now managed to fill up the um, the supply of, of of both of those circuits way down here. So we've got yeah, we now have enough red and enough green circuits made. And that's going to reduce the demand a little bit, but it's still it's still a bit crazy. We still we've still been getting through obscene amounts of stone over there, um, and the and, and the and the stockpile over here doesn't seem to really be re being replenished. So I think this is something that at the moment we have a bit of a shortage of it, but we'll try and keep an eye on it. I did notice that we've been pulling quite a bit from mines as well. Uh, the mine trains are running quite quite merrily, and, and so we, yeah, we are getting through a lot of stone at the moment. The other thing that's been a bit ridiculous is over here, this uranium. We're getting, we've got massive, massive quantities of this. And I had a bit of a look at the uranium supply, uh, the uranium processing over here. And this is a weird one because, as you'll notice, all of this is empty. We've got some some backed up along, uh, some backed up hot uranium along here. Um, but then the cold uranium, so yeah, it, it, it's strange. The, because the, um, the hot uranium has backed up completely, um, that has blocked this splitter here. Because as you may remember, from when you, when you do Covarex processing, you get out a mixture of stuff. So in this one, even more so in, in um, this is Crastorio, I think, uh, you get out a little bit of 235, a, a, a bit more of the 238, and um, by a bit of, I mean, it's uh, less than 1% 235 and 99% 238, and a bit of iron and a bit of stone. And so the problem is that down here, Eventually, this belt. Eventually, uh, you, you, when you fill up on two, three, five completely, it then blocks this belt because there is a small amount of two, three, five on here. Look, there's there's one there, there's one there, um, and I can't see any more. So, it's, like I say, it's, it's half like half a percent or so. Eventually, that's enough to clog up this splitter down here and fill up all all of this area, and so we can't get any more through. The, we've we've been we've filled it up completely from the from what's been coming through the Covarex system over here, and so that means it's now jammed this belt up to here, which means we're not getting the uranium two three eight out anymore which means that's not being flowed back up here to be turned into um, it, it, to be covarexed up into 235 so this system has all sort of emptied out and gone to sleep which is kind of okay it will start running again if we can feed some more 238 in but if we started using um, if we started using lots and lots of 238 now from over here from this station we would, could in theory then eventually run out now we've got 46 stacks in there we've got 51 stacks in there so this this is Fair, this is very nearly full. We have a lot of 238 available, but it's a bit of a concern that, in theory, if we started making massive quantities of uranium ammunition, for example, then we could, in theory, run out of it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. As you can see, this has been jammed for, I don't know how long this has been jammed for, but we've got, we've got most, this is mostly full over here, and we've got a train, like, we've got a plentiful supply of the, of the 235. So I don't think it's a problem, but it is a slight worry because the system isn't, isn't working quite as smoothly as, as, as would be ideal. Um, simply because we've backed up with too much of the uh, the 235. I carried on investigating the graph, and you can, you can see the stone is starting to pick up a bit over here. We've got at least some of it available now. I also noticed that we're a bit short of the uh, the turquoise science, which is the utility science, and also the advanced tech cards, and we're still sh still quite short of those, so there's, it, it's still struggling a bit. And so I went up to space to have a look to find out what the problem was with both of those. The utility science is being made over here, and as you can see, we've now caught up completely. So the problem initially was that we had a bit of a shortage of cryonite, and this goes back into what I, was, I think I was saying last week about not having... about the cryonite being delivered in by delivery cannon to here we had quite a large um, stockpile of it in the in the warehouses um, and then we stopped it and then we stopped it coming in 
and gradually, eventually, ran out of the cryonite. So now we've got cryonite coming in by spaceship or by train or by some, some other system. It's coming in properly in, in a way that actually works. So we now have a, a nice ready supply of cryonite. And that means it can come along here and these machines will run. However, when I came back to look at it, I found the reason it was struggling to, ca to catch up was because we weren't making these belts fast enough. So I just did the standard thing, chucked in some speed modules. They're now being built much more quickly and we can have as many of the... Um, we now have pl a plentiful supply of these. If anything, we're slightly short of the production science packs, the red ones over here. Um, well, that said, that's, that's just flowing through, probably because a train has arrived and is taking a load of them. So we have a nice healthy supply, uh, it's just we're pulling through a buffer at the moment. So that, 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 that I think is okay. The advanced science cards were slightly more complicated. So I came over here and had, had a look, and it turned out that when I first looked, they were short of bio scrubbers, these, these things over here, and so that was slightly problematic. I asked Mark about that, he said he wasn't aware of any problems with that, so I came over to, I came over to investigate, and it turned out we had loads of bio scrubbers on the belt here, like this, and so I was going, hang on, why, why, why are there bio scrubbers available here but they're not being passed through? And it turns out this was my fault, because in the, la in the previous stream, I'd come along here and I'd disconnected all of these warehouses from the circuit network in this area, because I didn't want the, um, I, I, I wanted to start pulling the numbers out of the, uh, out of the robo system, rather than reading the chests, because I forgot to, I forgot to wire in one of the um, one one of the chests down at the bottom here, and so I thought this was going to be much much better. Uh, just it would be much much more reliable. Would give us the actual numbers we wanted. Unfortunately, as part of doing this, I I, I didn't realise that all of these belts that are loading that, that are allowing various different things to flow through into the into the um, into the bus were connected to the warehouses instead of to the uh, instead of the rest of the network. So they were cut off. So I've put in an extra cable that goes from here, across here, and up to here, and now all of this is linked back in again, and we're, we are now able to monitor for the correct number of, um, of, of bio scrubbers up here, and so that started flowing again. It did also flow a number of other things through. There was a shortage of some of the uh, some of the ingots, probably some of the, the data cards. I, I, I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but a load more stuff flowed through from up here. So that did fix a number of different things in one fell swoop, which is uh, which is always nice. And you can see here the uh, the the uh, train, the science train has pulled in, so we're put, it's loaded up loads and loads of stuff, which is why all of the sciences are flowing through here to try and replenish the warehouses but because we have a buff we have a buffer at the other end in the science park we have a buffer in the train we have a buffer in the uh, warehouses and then we can and then we then top that up from the from the belts and i think we then actually have another buffer in this warehouse as well so it's a little bit it's a little bit excessive but we have many many buffers and so that means when a train comes in and fills up we'll still have quite a lot available to then refill all the buffers and, and the logistic system will work nicely you can see here there's some more uh, more science pack green science packs being brought up here for example and so this should all work quite nicely the only part that isn't working is the advanced tech car the automation yeah, the advanced tech cards, because they're being made, I mean, they are being made, but as you can see, they're not coming through enormously quickly. And that was the next thing I was going to, uh, I, lo I looked at and realised was a bit short from, from the graph. So the graph is actually showing, actually proving its use. And that is right next to the uh, the utility science. We have, yeah, you can see the uh, the advanced tech cards coming out over here. And those are being made by a string of machines up here, which have been speed moduled. And because you can't productivity module stuff in space, we thought, well, might as well just speed them because speed modules are relatively cheap and power is very, very cheap. So as I was saying earlier, so I think I've looped myself slightly there, that was originally the bio scrubbers that were causing the problem. So I fixed, so we fixed that one by going off and, and, and giving and giving the, uh, the bus a smack. Then it turned out we're short of the pylons, the space pylons are being made here because you need to have, um, it's, I think you need a couple of those, yeah you need two of those to make every five advanced tech cards, so we didn't have enough of those being made and that was due to the concrete not coming through fast enough and the concrete was also due to the stone coming through, uh, so the stone supply down on Norvis was insufficient and that had caused the concrete to, uh, to, to use up all of its buffers and, and at the time the bricks were prioritised over the concrete because we thought well bricks are more important because we need those to make circuits and circuits we need absolutely everywhere. Um, the concrete, it just goes into making a few buildings and every so often when Mark goes on a massive carpeting, carpeting the base spree. So with the, we reckon the, at the time, we reckon the, pri the priority for the concrete was fairly low. But now we need it for science up here, so I've gone down, I've, I've switched the prioritisation over down there to being to be producing both of them in equal priority. Uh, and that means we've got a little bit less of each, but it meant that we didn't have to wait for the stone bricks to fill up before we'd start getting concrete through. So that is now fine, and now the problem has been switched over to these immersium gears that aren't coming through particularly quickly. So if we track that one back to down here, we can see that actually it's, it's this. There isn't a problem with the immersium plate supply. There is simply a problem with how fast this machine can be. 
unloaded. So actually what I need to do to get that to fix that is upgrade that inserter and probably that inserter. And so if we do that, that, that might actually be sufficient. Uh, we'll give it a moment to find out and we'll, and we'll see. But hopefully that will mean that the top two machines here can start making the, um, the advanced tech cards as well. We can run them through a bit quicker. Maybe I can even put some more machines on the top because at the moment this doesn't seem to be sufficient. Now I think this might be because we're filling up the advanced tech card buffers at the moment. There's probably a buffer over in the, in the science park over here that is very, very empty. Uh, looking at this, yeah, we have we only have 400, 470 of them, so it's going down just as quickly as the other buffers are. However, I think that's probably a, still a fair comment that we're trying to fill up buffers because I suspect that the warehouse over here has never got up to the 2,000 that it's expecting, that it's trying to get to. And we've never had a massive full belt of buffer as well. So there is definitely a bit more filling up to go. You, you can see here the uh, the rocket science is coming through uh, to trickle as well, but there's a 1,000 of it in, in this warehouse, so the, again, there's and that this is probably less less of an issue. Although, given that that's just stopped, maybe it's more of an issue. Is there an actual problem with it? No, I think it, I think that's just down to the, uh, the, the the sort of the, the phases of the machines. So if they all if they they probably all filled up at more or less the same time because whatever supply we were short of most recently filled up again, and so all the machines ran, and then they all un unload in fairly quick succession like this, as you're seeing here. It all flows around, and and, and they're all, all going in more or less in sequence. In fact, I suspect this was probably the belt. The, the, the uh, last limiting factor was the belt being completely full. And so when we then slurped a huge amount out of it, this machine emptied, then this machine emptied, this one emptied, this one emptied, this one emptied, and so on, which is why you get that sort of running running down the column in, 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 in a row like that. And yes, upgrading those inserters has now meant we, we now have a sufficiency of the Immersium gears. So now we'll have the top two machines running here as well. That's a bit more, we're making a bit more of the advanced tech cards. As I say, I might, I'll probably extend this a bit further next time and then find out what the next problem is. And it'll probably be the... Um, It'll probably be the pylons again. But look, look at that. You can see the you can see the um, the concrete flowing in almost constantly. The, the rate we're getting through this concrete is crazy, um, and these and these holmium cables as well. Actually, there there is a lot of resource going into these things, but there's not really anything I can do about this because all of these are things that are made, need to be made in space. At least I think they are. Actually, I take that back. We could start making these uh, these space pylons on the ground, and then maybe we would be able. I know we probably we probably still wouldn't be able to productivity module them because they're not an intermediate, and you can normally only productivity module intermediate. So I guess that's not going to help. The immersium plates, those we probably could make on the ground. I do, of course, mean immersium gears. But yes, those we could make on the ground, and we would be able to productivity module them. So that would help a little bit. The space platform plating we have to make in space. And I think the uh, and I believe the uh, scaffolding we have to make in space. Oh, that's part of making this 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 one. So actually, the only one of these we could deep remove back down to the planet is the immersium gear production. Uh, I don't know whether that's worth the extra logistics headache or not. Um, but yeah, the the one that's taking up all of that concrete and all the beryllium is uh, we, we we can't do that anywhere else. <laughs> I might need to upgrade this to a manufactory as well because if we're looking at this, you can see there's this trickle of um, beryllium plate coming out, and now that's the limiting factor. Oh jeez, so many, so many things. You fix one bottleneck, and then there's another bottleneck, and another one, and another one. Uh, but that's that's Factorio for you. We um, we love it really. The other thing I've been fairly ke carefully keeping an eye on is the is the is the exotic resources over here. And as you can see, we've got we've got pl we've got plenty of beryllium, so I'm not worrying about that. The vulcanite that's dropped. I, I saw I saw a couple of those wink out just as I was uh, f flicking over to here. However, it's still pretty full. I'm the 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 vulcanite is going quite is doing pretty well at the moment. Um, I did see quite a lot of iridium earlier, but that's clearly just disappeared again, been used up by the voraciousness of the factory. And if we look over in space to see to check out the um, ag Agnea and everything, we can see here we've got yeah we've got a, a nice steady flow of vulcanite flowing through from here. The spaceship is here. It has 16, 30, 47. Th there is 47,000 more vulcanite in the spaceship. There is another 4,000 in this warehouse here, and it's just limited by the uh, by, by the junk bit, uh, disposal system here. So at the, at the moment, I mean this this is this is running okay. We we need to get some junk trains in to get rid of this junk, but. It, but we haven't run into a shortage here. There's absolutely loads of it over here. We, we are basically we are okay over in in, in orbit for the uh, for the um, for the Vulcanite. And at the previous end, over in Agnea orbit, we can see that these these warehouses, well, one of them is full, the other two are nearly full, another couple of trains, and that'll be completely ready. So I reckon when that spaceship is finally released from Norbit, because all of the Vulcanite has been taken out of it, it's going to come over here, and it's going to be able to load up completely from from here immediately. I've got an absolute ton of the Vulcanite coming through. This is working really, really nicely. And that is because down on Agnea, I've made some changes, some significant changes. Last time, you may you may you may or may not remember that we had a bit we had um 
we, we had this system over here bringing in the core chunks. They were being pulverized down. We're getting a decent amount of vulcanite out of those. And then it was being processed by all four of these modules here to be turned into actual vulcanite cubes and then passed onwards. Now, I've uh, switched this over a bit so you can see the, the belts across here have been split off. So now the stuff coming in from the, uh, from the pulverization is only going into the first two of these and then being shipped off down the belts over here. We've got, uh, we've got the disposal from the core fragment processing and then, the dis and then the disposal from the vulcanite production. And that's all flowing down here. In, into, into the warehouses. And down here I've put in prioritizations for all of the other systems. And so these will only load when there is less than 20,000 vulcanite in in this warehouse? But there is less than 20,000 in there. I don't know why they are not currently loading. This is obviously hooked up to something else. Hmm. There is... Yeah, this, this is not set up properly. There is 168,000 vulcanites somewhere. Um, this must be linked into the space system as well. So there must be... Oh, yes, there's a signal receiver up here. And that's getting the signal of everything that's up in space. So we know how much enriched vulcanite there is. So we know whether to pass that through or not. And I've just tapped into that down here. And oh dear, that's, that's why this has all gone a little bit weird. Um, <clears throat> yes, because this, this should actually be a green, green cable. Because at the moment... I mean, to be honest, at the moment, maybe that's, not a, maybe that's not a bad thing. I need to think this through a bit more carefully. But because the, the idea of this is that we'll bring through the vulcanite that's being made from the core pulverization. Before we bring through the vulcanite that's being made from the, from the mines. And so... Having this cut off a bit at the wrong... I mean, it is cutting off at the wrong time. However, at the moment, we have so much vulcanite that maybe actually the way it's working is better than the way I designed it. I'll have a good think about this in the next stream, or for the next stream, and try and decide what I want to actually do with all of this. Because at the moment, it's not doing what I meant it to do, but there is so much being, but there is enough being made from the core mining that maybe that isn't a problem. The other expansions I've done up here are to put in a separate station for each one of these modules, so each one of these areas. So we've got this one being fed by that station, this one by this station, this one by this station, and so on and so on and so on. The idea of this is that we now have only one warehouse feeding one system, and that means that the, 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 any, when a train comes in and drops off some vulcanite, it'll last for a bit longer. Whereas before, when there was two, when we had two areas being fed off one warehouse, it was all, there was always a massive gap forming in there. So as it is, we've now got significantly more of the, the vulcanite available for each each drop-off area, or for each processing area, and so the, the system should run much better. In, uh, however, I did also have to put in some more mines to, to keep that up, to keep that up and satisfied. So over here, I've got some additional uh, vulcanite pickup areas. I put in some, put, found three nice healthy patches of vulcanite. As you can see, this one's 23 million, 17 million, 14 million. This one feeds into this station, this one feeds into this station, and then this one feeds both of them as a lower priority, so it'll top them up as they start to run out. So you see over here, when, um, when this patch starts to run out, we've got priorities of when there's less than 5k in there, we'll feed more through from the other patch. So in theory, we should never run out. But we'll use this bottom patch here, the big one, first, and then start to use this one as, a, as, a, as an emergency top-up later. And then we've got, I've gone and I've put in um, smart systems down here. So we've got this one is saying, divide the amount of vulcanite by 3,200, output that as an L. So we send that into, into the station. So we're dividing the amount of vulcanite in, in the warehouse by, about, by the amount a train can take. And so, when there's a train full, the train limit will be set to 1. When there's two trains full, the train limit will then be, well, there'll be more than 6,400 in here, it'll set it to 2. And eventually, when the warehouse gets to completely full, that's enough for three train loads at 9,600. And so, or, and then it goes over that, but it doesn't get to, it doesn't get to a fourth train's worth, which is a good thing, because there's room for three trains to fit in the buffer here. This was... A lucky coincidence because I designed the station, I designed the uh, the, st the mine station to have room for three trains in its stacker, and then realised afterwards that that was exactly right for me not to have to worry about trying to put some sort of limit on this. Where so you where you say if L is greater than three, then drop it down to three because you can't fit that many trains in. Um, I did realise as I was setting it up that I was going to have to think about that. But then I worked out that, conveniently, it was exactly the right size. And the same, exactly the same is happening over here. So because we've got so much vulcanite at the moment, and all of the all of the ones that process vulcanite from actual vulcanite ore have shut down and have been shut down for ages, all of the mine systems are full. Over here, I've got a fairly similar system, where it divides the amount of vulcanite in the, in the warehouse by minus 3.2 thousand. And then, so you get a sort of... A negative of the number of trains it would be asking for if it was a pickup station and I know that sounds a bit weird but that's kind of what it's doing um, <laughs> and then after that it adds two onto it so if this is completely empty then there'll be a zero coming through we'll get a zero coming out we'll add two onto there if there is a full train load in there then we'll get 3,200 coming through we'll get minus one coming out so we'll only ask for one more train and that means that uh, this 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 maxes out at two if this is completely empty and there's room for two trains to park in here 
And so this means it'll call for more trains, um, another train to come over when it gets below 6,400, or it'll call for two trains to come over if it gets down below 3,200. And that seems to be quite effective at keeping the system uh, supply nicely supplied over here. Now, we do have a little bit of a problem that uh, we have too many trains and not enough spaces in the, in the, in the stations at the moment. So, at the moment, we have a, a train stuck here and a train stuck here because, as I say, all four of, I think all four of my, all four of my mines, here's the third one and the fourth one, these are the old two that have been there for ages, have filled up all three of their buffers. So, potentially, I need to go out and put in another Vulcanite mine somewhere just to soak up the extra trains. However... If we, as, as soon as one of these starts to run again, uh, well, as soon as one of these starts to run again, it'll call for another train, or, or this one will call for another train, and that'll free up some extra spaces in the stations for the trains to clear off to, and so then the, these empty trains will then leave. So I don't expect it to be a problem, but it is, it does look a little bit wrong with these trains sitting here going, I could, I don't have a mind to go to. What, what, what do you expect me to do? What, what I'm, what I'm saying from this is, I think the Vulcanite is well and truly thoroughly sorted out now. We've got, uh, and it's also sensibly prioritised in that we will start off by using just the, uh, just the Vulcanite from core mining pump that down through here and then see how we go from there but I do need to check out the numbers for that prioritization because that is not right um, in fact what do we say what, what are we seeing here we are seeing 170,000 Vulcanite and up in orbit we have 53 54 61 that's about yeah that's about right so I think this is this is correct then that we're monitoring for the amount in orbit however I don't know I'm, uh, I'm going to need to think about this quite hard to try and get the try, try and get the, the numbers right so that so we don't so we build so we, most of the time we're just making vulcanite from core fragments but when we have a shortage if we do ever have a shortage we can start making it from the uh, from the mines instead adding in all of these extra trains was a bit of a mission I, I put in a, a siding here where I can build a new train it'll get fueled up and then can be sent off to go and join the queue but I didn't have very many um, wagons over here and I couldn't be bothered to get to fly back over to uh, Norbit to go and get some more so I start off by pocket crafting them but that was taking for ever um, all I, and I was able I was getting my pulling my resources out of the smelteries down here so uh, I had a, a decent supply of um, iron and steel but it was still taking forever to do the actual building of them so I dropped in a little hand loaded area over here which which will make the uh, make the wagons for me and I was grabbing them from there fortunately I didn't run out of locomotives because those are much harder to make but I was able to just put the wagon together here slap them to, slap the train together and then send it off to go around and start start going around the loop and uh, and that's why I now have quite so many trains if we look at one of these stations there are 15 trains running around this system uh, and that was because I kept putting more and more and more in until it seemed to be enough when everything was running. Uh, at the moment it's not running so all the trains are idle but they were all they were all trundling around and that's because they're all relatively slow because they're running on processed fuel and it's quite a long way to get out to some of these mines so the trains were all there were a lot of trains just en route to places and I needed to have enough that I could have basically I could have the three for each of these and then a couple of extra ones and it, it, it seems to work so I think I've probably got about the right number of trains now maybe I should pull out one or two to get rid of this problem here but I, th I think I think it's okay there was a lo quite a lot of train congestion from that as well so especially in this area around here because all the trains essentially they all have to come in along here from the mines then loop around this way and come back out this way and that caused did cause quite a bit of congestion. It never caused an actual jam. Uh, the, the system is signalled up properly, so, so the trains don't jam. But there was a lot. There were a lot of trains in here. There are trains waiting to come out of stations, that sort of thing, and that's not ideal. So I did end up with. Uh, so I put in this little bypass around here to avoid the uh, the core weight area because a lot of the congestion was coming from the core trains that will come into here and then have to cross over to go down to here, and then on the way out they'll come back up and they'll loop round. They'll go back into here to wait for another core mine to be to be ready for uh, to take them, and so that creates a lot of congestion in this area in the middle because there's a lot of crossing over being done. Um, I could have sort of ripped, redesigned this area a bit. Maybe had the trains come in around the bottom, or done some, or have them wait over here. Or I could have done. There are various things I could have done differently. But I decided the easiest way to do it was going to be to just put in this this bypass. It goes around, it goes around the top of it, and allows the trains that are coming into the uh, to the, the Vulcanite drop-off stations over here to take a little bit of a shortcut and, and and go round this whole problem area. And hopefully they'll go round it on the way out as well. Unless they're going to this station, this 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 mine down here, I suppose. A final thing to mention regarding the Vulcanite, I, I've, I talked a bit, I talked quite a lot last week about how we're now bringing all the sulphur in from um, uh, from from Norbit because there's a huge amount being brought over from Tara. So I, w I won't labour that again and show you all the belts. But over in Norbit, Mark has fixed the prioritisation of the sulphur. So we're only passing the sulphur over to the Agnea spaceship, which has now departed, interestingly enough. We'll go and spot that in a moment. Um, if there is an excess coming in from Taras, so presumably over here that we're watching for a decently big number, uh, two, more than 200. 
I'd probably have made that a bit bigger myself. But anyway, the idea is that this will now only take the uh, sulphur that comes in from Taras and won't take sulphur that's been brought up from the ground. However, if we do need sulphur to be brought up from Norvis for um, uh, Bigrid or Talos, then we still can. The sulphur is still going to be available and be, will be brought up in case of emergency. So over here you can see we're, we're loading it into here if there's less than 100. It, it then gets passed over to here where we're loading it into here if there's less than 100. Which means So we should always keep a supply of it available for the, for the places that really, really need it. But Agnair is quite capable of making its own sulphur if necessary. So we're only using that if we have an excess coming in from uh, from Taras. And as you can see, there is quite quite a lot of sulphur does come in from Taras because of the uh, the immersion processing. The ship has already arrived in Agnair orbit. We are loading it up quickly with lots and lots of stuff we don't care about. Oh, and and some and some um, vulcanite as well. So that, that's good. Uh, it is now two thirds full. We've got yeah we've we've got enough in the warehouses here to finish off loading it. However. This probably means that we are now down to below whatever, however many thousand. Um, I know we still got still got eighty thousand vulcanite in the in the warehouses up here. That's quite spectacular. Which probably means that down on um, Agnea itself, yeah, we still have we still haven't kicked in with the with the ult with the extra with the high speed uh, vulcanite production. That's quite impressive. Even though we are loading the spaceship up, there is still sixty thousand or whatever it was that I was. Uh, there's still twenty forty. 70,000 uh, Vulcanite in these in these warehouses. I'm actually quite I am genuinely quite impressed at how fast we seem to be producing the Vulcanite just from the core processing. Um, but it is really nice to know that um, we, we have enough we have enough excess production that we can kick it in at a higher rate if and when we need to. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. It's, it's it's worked better than I was expecting. Um, I, I as I say, I still want to have a look a bit more of a, a careful look at it, but it seems to be going rather well. Mark has done some further work on Big Rid as well. Uh, so we had a on Big Rid, one of the one of the processing steps is this one here that makes the uh, the Vita blooms um, blooming lovely. Uh, pass, produces a certain amount of methane gas, and that was pre that's being passed up here to be put into a tank and then be frozen with cryonite slush uh, in order to make cryo uh, in order to make methane ice, which can then be shipped off and uh, and we can do whatever with it. Basically, at the moment we ship it all down to Norvis and then put it in a box and forget about it. Uh, this was going okay, but unfortunately um, Mark was getting all of his cryonite in by delivery cannon, as you see here, and the delivery cannons have all now been decommissioned, so he's not got any cryonite, which means he's not able to make any methane ice. And so he's now started just venting it, venting the excess. So we keep he's filling it up to um, to 150,000, and then just venting off the excess into the into the air. So I'm sure uh, Big Red now smells a bit um, a, a bit pongy, but oh well, never mind. And uh, there are it's not like there are any biters out here to complain about it anymore anyway. So it's, it doesn't doesn't really matter. And we don't we don't have any real use for methane ice yet. At some point, I guess we're going to have to start bringing in um, cryonite by in, in the spaceship over to Big Red as well as as well as glass and rare metals and sulfur and um, uh, vulcanite, but now is not that time. We'll uh, we shall do that later. <laughs> but uh, at some point, yes, we will start bringing bringing the um, bringing the cryonite in at the probably at the point where we start to use the methane ice and wish we wish we'd been doing it all along and hadn't vented off 130 times whatever, probably 130 times 100 uh, of, of it. Um, but I think we're probably we're probably going to be okay for that for a while. I, I what, what uses methane gas? Okay, it's going we're going to need it for lattice pressure vessels at some point. Uh, we could make it into processed fuel, probably don't care. Could make it into bio sludge oh, and oil, but again, probably don't care. Oh, it's needed for naquium. Okay, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna definitely need to have some of that then. Needed for self-sealing gel, nutrient gel, and oh, it can be barreled and voided. However, there are other recipes for nutrient gel, which we, we may well be using instead, like coal and fertilizer. This one's cheaper in bio sludge and cosmic water. Costs slightly more chemical gel. I, I, I don't know. It's probably it does. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. Basically, I think we're probably quite happy with making nutrient gel the uh, the old-fashioned way. So my biggest worry is going to be making these naquium ingots because that absolutely requires methane gas as well as pyroflux and various naquium naquium things. So we're definitely yeah we're going to have to make sure we have uh, a supply of methane gas available um, wherever it is we end up doing this. So. We may end up trying to make methane gas in other ways. Um, how do you make it? You can make it from ice, you can make it from vitamin lounge ways, or you can get it out of barrels. So, okay, so it is only this this is the only way to make methane gas methane gas, other than mining it up as a, as as methane ice from the ground or from, from from space. So this is probably going to become incredibly valuable at some point in the not too distant future. So I think it might be worth getting the cryonite in here sooner rather than later. <laughs> Uh, even if we don't have a use for it at the moment. And so that is all I have for you today. Don't forget to check back on Monday for part two of this video when I should be talking about what uh, Mike and Tristan have been up to since today was very much about me, 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 and a little bit Mark. Uh, sorry about hogging the uh, the limelight for this video, but uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it just happened. 
and then I'll be streaming something on Tuesday. At the, at the moment, I'm planning. I think I'm planning for a satisfactory stream on Tuesday because I, ha I I played that a couple of weeks ago. I was away for work last week, and so it'd be nice to do a little bit more of that before I, I do want to finish off XCOM 2, and I will be going back to that at some point. But I want to play a little bit more satisfactory first, just to get a bit more of a rounded opinion of it. Uh, we'll be playing some more of uh, K2SE on Thursday, of course. Uh, Mark won't be joining us because he's off doing sort of gallivanting around the world or something, I don't know. He's, dis he's disappearing for the rest of the year anyway, which is uh, a bit unfortunate because um, at some point all of this Vitamaland production is going to break and we're not going to, none of, no one else is going to have any idea how the whole thing works. Uh, so, hope, but hopefully, hopefully he'll be back before that happens. And then, of course, the uh, standard videos will be coming out at the weekend. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll try and fit in, forget to get a video out for Wednesday as well. We shall see how it goes. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the other shenaniganry that goes on on this channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.